Have you ever thought about why God makes us wait? Why God makes us wait? It is said when you pray for more patience, you are praying for more situations to prove or grow your patience. Job 14, 14 says, and I quote, If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. As we go through our versions of waiting, permit me to introduce what to expect and how to come out better and stronger of your waiting period and seasons. Everyone at some point will have one thing he or she is waiting for. Waiting is empty space where nothing happens. When you are done waiting, something will definitely happen to your expectations. And that is how to know your waiting period is over. This period is hard no matter who you are and what you are waiting for. We don't like feeling stuck in seasons of waiting. The current situations in the world is an example of the seasons of waiting. The whole world went on a compulsory holiday. We are all made to wait for a change. The airport shut and going outside your house became a crime at some point. Or hosting a party or having someone outside the household come visiting. The only safety guaranteed by the world is staying home. Is staying home. How long are we going to stay home? But that is the only guarantee that we have to stay safe. Even though this is not a time we all love, we don't enjoy this time of waiting. Everyone will go through one part time and as we grow in life. But the period doesn't have to be just empty space of nothing until something happens. I'm sure there is something you currently await its manifestation. Some wait in marriage for fruit of the womb. Some wait to get married, to be found, and not just being found, but to be found by the right person. Some wait to get a job or for a change of job. Some wait for a health condition to get better. Job waited for God, even though he wrote. Job 14, 14. Job waited for God. But some also give up to faith in the place of waiting. Is that you? Abraham waited for the promised child. And when God showed up, he staggered not in unbelief. Romans 4.20 tells us that. And to even think that God waits on us. God waits to see us come in terms with his word in our lives and world. Jeremiah 1.12 tells us, NIV version says, And the Lord said, That's right. And it means I am watching and will certainly carry out all my plans. God is watching, waiting for his plans to come true. God wait on us, wait for us at every point in time. And that's one thing we need to meditate on. That's one thing we need to think about on. That God wait on us. So even God is patient for us to come to terms with his word and fulfillment of his word in our lives and in our environment and in our world. Although God is ready to give us clear direction, He doesn't always give it quickly. And it can be agonizingly slow sometimes, and most especially when it comes to times of our learning. Here are some reasons God makes us wait. Number one, He wants to get your attention. Sometimes God makes us wait to get your attention. He may have been trying to speak to you about a certain situation, past for knowledge and correction or future to keep you safe so you could align your step and actions with ease. If it is correction, it wants you to repent. 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Lord will not hear me. The Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart. So when God keeps you waiting to get your attention, if it's for correction, God wants you to repent when you repent, you draw back to him and he pulls you through and you overcome that waiting period just because sin or iniquity keeps a lot of us at the 
point of waiting because until we learn what God wants us to pick, we might not be able to move on or move away from that particular stage and period in our lives. God cannot part iniquity or sin with anyone he wants to work with. Until you repent, you are not ready to move forward. We all have seasons in our lives that we need to quickly reconcile and check back if we are still in faith. And so God is waiting on us to check back and see that we are in faith with him. The moment it gets our attention, then we are ready to move on. Number two, he is equipping you spiritually. Waiting helps equip you spiritually. God wants you to see things, your life through his eyes. He wants you to handle the occurrences around through understanding and wisdom. He has work to accomplish through us and preparing you for that particular work is why you might be in your waiting period. And that is why it's always good for us to open our hearts and our minds to Him. The better or the earlier we do, the better or the earlier we we'll step out of our waiting period and begin to accomplish things for Him. But God will make sure we are ready to face our next phase of life before He releases us even to those dangers, to those wars, to those turmoils, to those challenges. When you are ready, God knows when you are ready. We are not to tell Him when we are ready, but He will tell us and launch us out fully because He knows we are ready. Number three he is building patience in your life. Waiting means patiently looking up to Him for solutions, not a time to try other means or many other things as your mind or people around you suggest. Job's wife advised him. She said, curse God and die. She preferred to be a widow than to see her husband rot. Friends or family will advise based on their level of love for you, but they cannot love you just as much as God loves you. And when we listen, we might miss out of God's plan, except to return to Him for mercy. A lot of us have, because of compromise, have kept ourselves in the waiting period longer than the period we should have actually overcome and come out. The children of Israel kept themselves for 40 years for a journey they should have gone for 40 days. But because they did not learn, they tried too many things as their mind suggested. They complained, they murmured, they yelled at Moses until Moses struck the rock when he was supposed to speak with the rock. Through their annoyance, through their anger, and through their complaint, and through their murmurs. And that is what a lot of us do. Sometimes our prayers become noise in God's ears because they come through complaining. And so we keep ourselves in the waiting period longer than when we should have actually been. That is why it is important we listen to God we work with God, we pick what we need to pick at each interval so that God can take us and move us to the next level of our lives. The earlier the better, the earlier the better, the earlier the better. Number four, he is building dependence and trust on him. When we experience delay, we tend to look for thrills in life and it could lead to looking for a quick fix. And this explains why Christians compromise. And this has destroyed the spiritual life of so many. Suddenly, compromise becomes a norm. I listened to how Benin said, I almost destroyed my ministry. You know, brother, wait. Sister, wait. Brother, wait. Sister, wait. Compromise can only lead us further from God. Compromise can only lead us further from the truth. Compromise can only lead us further from our solutions. Compromise can only keep us and take us 10 times back from where we are supposed to be. God is waiting on us to see him, to make sure we learn so that we can survive our path. No other person can love you as much as God will. Listen to God. Trust his processes. You what you become after his processes is a product of what God has made you. And that can only come through his grace in your patience. In your patience. Finally, number five. He is transforming our characters. He is transforming our characters. Waiting builds and transforms our characters. Moses learned by becoming a servant to his father-in-law. In the wilderness, he came from the palace and being served to serving. And when he was done learning, God called him to becoming the leader of a new nation. Joseph had his own episode. 
you know escape dry times from the well with no water escape sin against god by refusing to sleep with potiphar's wife interpreted the dreams of the butler and baker even though he was going through the pain he did not deserve but in doing this he finalized the interpretation of his own dreams he was exalted god calls us to wait to prepare us for the glory ahead hebrews 11:26 says esteeming the reproach of christ greater riches than the treasures in egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward my name is Udwak, but you can call me both and god bless you real good thank you for listening to our returning subscribers hands on the head i salute thanks for being a blessing it's been a great blessing having you around here thank you so much as this channel is dedicated to see you thrive in life to see you happy to see you overcome your challenges thank you for being a blessing if this is your first time on speaking to this channel please do not forget to hit the subscribe button you also comment below or give a like this goes a long way in encouraging us thank you for being a part of this and thanks for watching to this particular point god bless you